Unsolved Crimes newspaper as a response to Cavalier civil society organization within the framework of a struggle against religious extremism presents. Apologetica ed è arrivata una convocazione da parte del Papa. Massimo Intervinia, Italian religion sociologist, doctor of philosophy, professor, founder and managing director of the Center for Studies on New Religions, former representative on combating racism, xenophobia and discrimination at OSCE. Uh, my sheer greetings to you, Professor Intervinia. And uh, first of all, let me and thank you for your time to give uh, the interview to Unsolved Crimes uh, newspaper. Thank uh, you. So let me ask you the first question. Uh, not so long time ago I sent you some links to Facebook groups of uh, HEMA and their publications about uh, Dr. Maltzev. So in these publications uh, HEMA people claims that Dr. Maltzev is a cult leader. But the most interesting fact is that they refer to Russian Orthodox Church and Irenaeus Center of Alexander Dworkin. So, uh, Professor Intervenia, how can you classify these statements? Well, first of all, uh, a word about uh, him. Of course, I'm not an expert on uh, martial arts, so I cannot comment uh, on uh, their statements regarding to martial arts. However, I, as you know, I have a double heart and I have been for 30 years uh, a lawyer specialized in copyright and a member of uh, the largest uh, European law firm. And uh, it seems to me that it's a typical uh, situation of an association uh, trying to exert a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Of course, all monopolies are promoted as being in the interest of the consumers, but in fact they are in the interest of a small or large group of persons who want to protect their tar and prevent anybody else from entering. I believe the Hima folks will do well uh, to read the recent book by my colleague Holly Falk on uh, chiropractic. Uh, you know, chiropractic is an alternative uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, for many, many years in the uh, United States, uh, the AMA, the American Medical Association, which of course is much more important than HEMA, is the association uh, to which all American doctors belong. Mm -hmm. They promoted the campaign against uh, chiropractic, saying chiropractic uh, is not good for the patients, it's not good for the consumer. So they were sued, and uh, finally, the Supreme Court of the United States established something very important that the American Medical Association uh, cannot have a monopoly on therapy. So either they stop to attack uh, uh, chiropractors uh, as quacks, and they also say the chiropractors were actually members of a cult, which is very interesting for our case, or under the Sherman Act, uh, which is the law against antitrust, the American Medical Association will be punished uh, and perhaps uh, bankrupt. Now, you should consider this point, how important is the medical profession, how important uh, for the state, for the government, for the community is regulating uh, medicine. Uh, however, even in this case, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States concluded that uh, the American Medical Association has no right to exclude a new competitor. Mm -hmm. Even if what chiropractic does has a, some mystical religious basis, so they say it's a cult, even if perhaps uh, D.D. Palmer, who was the founder of chiropractic, was a little bit creative about the traditions he studied, perhaps uh, some of his accounts were fictional, like novels, 
and not to be taken as records of historical facts, but even though the Supreme Court said to you, American doctors, you don't have a monopoly. So I believe it's a fair legal conclusion that HEMA cannot have a monopoly on martial arts. Of course, they have the right to say that this or the other master group do not belong to HEMA. That's their privilege. But I believe if they attack some groups by calling them frauds or quacks or cults, they are exactly in the same situation the American Medical Association back 20 years ago or more was in respect of the chiropractors, and they lost their case. So I believe under the rules in this country, in the United States, and he makes from the United States, uh, about uh, monopolies uh, uh, and uh, consumers, uh, I believe it's a very typical situation. And here I'm putting together my experience uh, as an attorney and as a sociologist. All uh, groups creating uh, monopolies, particularly unlawful uh, monopolies under the antitrust laws, they always say, oh, we should protect the consumers mm -hmm. against the cults and the quacks and the pros. But in fact, uh, as the court says in the American Medical Association versus chiropractic case, and in countless other cases, uh, more often than not, uh, monopolies do not deeply care about consumers. They just want to protect their tariff against the competitors. And, uh, and it seems to me it's a minor incident, of course, with respect to the claim to a monopoly of such a huge uh, reality as the American Medical Association, but we are basically seeing the same pattern. But you wanted to, you mentioned it also the cult issue, I believe. It is now that the HEMA movement origins from the United States. So, as an expert, when have you seen the last time in the United States that organization refers to the Russian Orthodox Church or to the Irenaeus Center of Alexander Dworkin? In Russia, the Orthodox Church was using a different category, heresy, while in France and in the United States, uh, the anti-cultists were mostly secular and they tried uh, to use a category of cult as a group creating damages through brainwashing, uh, uh, mind control, undue influence, etc. So uh, the anti-cult movements have a long history which has been uh, studied. Uh, basically, in the US they lost a number of court cases uh, particularly in 1990 when the Fishman decision uh, ruled that brainwashing is not a valid category. They have not disappeared, they have less influence with courts of law, but they keep an influence with some media and uh, are supported uh, for different and complicated reasons by some uh, industries and uh, and. Uh, Corporation. So they still exist, but uh, they lost a number of court cases. So it's safe to say that the anti cultists are less influential now than they were in the 1970s or 1980s. Uh, even uh, the support uh, from the French government, uh, and when I say support, I also mean money, because all these organizations need the money. Uh, is less important than it was in the 1990s because in France the main problem is Islamic ultra-fundamentalist uh, terrorism mm -hmm. and so most of the money that France consecrated to the fight against cults is now devoted to the fight against what we call uh, the radicalization uh, of young Muslims, which is a different uh, uh, business. But I want to insist on the point that uh, American large anti-cult organization, the Cult Awareness Network, which went bankrupted, uh, the American Family Foundation, which became 
the International Cultic Studies Association, which is somewhat a more moderate approach, they were secular organizations. They always say, well, we don't care about the creeds. You can deny the Trinity, you can deny Jesus Christ is God, we don't care. We care about the deeds. If these people do some bad deeds, mm -hmm. uh, we will go after them. Of course, some of the deeds, I believe, uh, were imaginary. I don't believe brainwashing exists. Uh, some of the deeds were very real, of course. Uh, if the question is, were they criminal groups? Of course, they were criminal groups. Uh, in the United States, there are uh, six, seven thousand different religious movements, some of them committed crimes. Even group within the main line uh, religions, of course, committed crime. There are rings of Catholic uh, pedophile, priests, uh, pedophile, uh, rabbis, uh, uh, group uh, within Islam which sympathized or sponsored terrorism. So it's a complicated story. But it was a secular approach. So I have never seen uh, the American anti-cult movement uh, in its expression. Some of them are in their own way serious. You can have a dialogue with them. I disagree with them, but uh, for instance, with the International Cultic Studies Association, I've participated in their conferences. I believe you can have a dialogue with them. I've never seen their line or their definition of a group as a cult uh, dictated uh, by the Russian Orthodox Church or people like Alexander Dworkin, uh, who have a different agenda. For them, a cult is a group uh, who teaches something which is regarded as heresy by the Russian Orthodox Church. So, uh, and Dworkin uh, uh, is also a very controversial character. So, most of the, I would call serious American uh, anti-cultists will not touch him, uh, as we say here, with a 10 feet pole, because uh, he uh, was regarded as too radical and too extreme. Now, in Europe, what happened in the last few years, in France, in Italy in particular, in my native country, and elsewhere, is uh, uh, the anti-cult movements are small, are struggling, they have no money. So a new leadership is emerging uh, in Russia. Uh, Russia, uh, of course, liquidated the, the Jehovah's Witnesses and went against another 50 or so groups. It's very bad for Russian international image and for the international image of the Russian Orthodox Church. So they started uh, becoming very eager for anti-cultists in countries like France and Italy to say Russia is right because Jehovah's Witnesses are so bad that what Russia is doing is not uh, breaching religious liberty but it's protecting the good citizens uh, of Russia. So all of a sudden in Europe uh, we saw Alexander Dworkin uh, becoming vice president of one, not the only one, but an important uh, uh, European uh, anti-cult organization, FECRIS, and actually becoming the most influential leader of FECRIS. And uh, we see time and again uh, uh, European anti-cult websites uh, uh, and uh, publications republish Russian uh, propaganda, uh, manufactured uh, mostly by the working and in part by some other people, and perhaps by governmental agencies which is in a way new and uh, is based on a misunderstanding because uh, many of those who cut and paste the Russian material, perhaps for free, perhaps because they have some monetary advantage, I don't know, uh, but uh, uh, a very secular person. And it's very strange that these secular persons uh, are actually following a line which emanates in certain sector of the Russian Orthodox Church. I want to be very clear. I'm not accusing the Russian Orthodox Church uh, as being as a huge organization uh, following what uh, working or some other guys do. Of course, uh, uh, in the Orthodox Church there are also people who don't like what Dworkin does. But it's a new phenomenon. We see European secular anti-cultists uh, trying to, to uh, cut and paste and import propaganda, which
which is actually created in a religious uh, milieu in Russia, which is a part, not the whole, a part mm -hmm. of the Russian Orthodox Church. To be honest with you, I've never seen this in America before, or very minimally. Uh, also because Russia doesn't have such a good press in America, you know the story of the interference, uh, interference in the American election, mm -hmm. so yeah. they, Syria, yeah. they don't have a, Ukraine, they don't have a very good press in America. And uh, so he might believe a very small player, because uh, uh, they, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this Russian propaganda, for instance, about Jehovah's Witnesses is contradicent uh, to the large uh, uh, American media outlets, uh, the television. So he might be just a small player, but because it's small, perhaps they are being successful uh, in uh, actually having uh, what I believe it's a secular organization, because I don't believe FEMA is a Christian Orthodox organization, in uh, buying uh, the definition of cult or material about cults actually emanating uh, from uh, uh, sectors uh, of the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, and uh, I would also say it's not a quality material, because I have read in translation some of the material Kima links to from Alexander and Peyev or the century. It's very cheap. I mean, uh, uh, three quarter of this is insults. It's mm -hmm. not uh, even uh, really a, a reconstruction of what uh, uh, some groups uh, do, and the other part is, uh, is plainly wrong. Uh, you know. There is the story of a group called the Odessa Templars, which <laughs> never existed. So it's, uh, uh, it's either wrong or results in a sequel of itself. So uh, as small as it may be, because uh, HEMA is not the New York Times, it's not the, the CNN, uh, and they say Russian propaganda is mostly targeting these outlets, uh, uh, as small as it may be, I believe it's a clue of uh, how this uh, propaganda coming from some sectors of the Orthodox Church in uh, Russia is uh, uh, trying to infiltrate organizations even in the United States. How do you think? What is the reason for American martial arts organization to promote the opinion of Russian Orthodox Church and Mr. Dworkin? Uh, it's not common even for American professional anti-cultists to follow and uh, take seriously working on uh, Neveyev. And so here we have people who apparently are not professional anti-cultists who discover the Renew Center and the blog of uh, Alexander Neveyev and start uh, uh, linking uh, to Russian article, presumably only a very small percentage of their members understand for linguistic reasons uh, because they are in Russian. And so it would be very interesting uh, to investigate uh, how exactly this um, uh, Russian uh, propaganda agency, the Irenaeus Center, uh, reach out to him. Uh, there is some uh, connection or if they simply uh, they are very um, attentive and follow what's going on on Facebook uh, and since they saw him at some uh, professional monopolistic reasons to attack a certain group they decided uh, to, to contact them but it's very strange I, and as I say in a way it's minimal I will be more concerned uh, if uh, Russian propaganda material, as it has happened, for instance, in Italy, would appear in some mainline uh, media. Uh, but uh, he might believe is followed by a comparative uh, small percentage of Americans. But on the other hand, I take it seriously, because I believe this Russian propaganda to be very uh, poisonous uh, and dangerous. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, even through a very 
very small uh, and when all is said and done, uh, comparatively unimportant channel. Perhaps this Hema episode is very minor and uh, not particularly important. Your group will answer and uh, uh, will, uh, you will continue your activity. I don't believe you will stop your activity because of Hema's criticism. And uh, again, if I insist, they will uh, <coughs> risk legal actions under the uh, antitrust laws. Thank you, dear professor, for your opinion and for your time. Okay, see you soon. Thank you, professor. Thank you, thank you. Bye.